we rarely get to know when the last time is until after the fact. We go through the day, we kiss that person, we wave to them, say goodbye, leave the building, finish the meeting, and we just didn't know, we didn't know it then, that that would be the last time. The last time he would do that thing, he would kiss that person, you would see them. Last time you would, you would have the gathering. I didn't know it was the last time. I didn't know it last week. I didn't know it, but I know it now. I was scripting the episode for this week and I had been working on it for a bit and life doesn't care that you have gigs. I didn't care that I had just found out it was the last time. I had to put makeup on, get something to eat, show up to the gig, and for two sets pretend that I was having a blast and dance around on stage and sing and do the thing and <sighs> and just pretend when in the inside, inside I was broken. My heart was broken. Before I hit that stage, just hours before I was crying on the floor of my living room, devastated because it was the last time. But I didn't know it until after the fact. So, today I am not doing the scripted episode. Today I just hit record. Thank you to the friend who told me to do this or recommended me to do this. She didn't tell me. She invited me. That's that's what a healthy relationship looks like. Healthy friend just throws the nugget and still supports you. Doesn't matter what you choose. Not everybody's like that. And this weekend, I went on grieving mode again. And it's grief on top of grief. Let's face it, I've been grieving for so long. I don't even remember a time where I wasn't grieving. But there's something, there's something particular about grieving. Grieving from the... <laughs> having that first wave of grief. We'll, we'll put it that way. When you have a new grief show up, it's like a, it's like a whole new wave that shows up. And the thing just sends you spinning. So today on this very much unscripted episode I want to talk about my feelings about the fact that I am yet again facing another ending another time of my life where I lose something again and I go off into (laughs) the cold dark night never to be seen again Yeah, that's that's where we're at. Hi, I am Raisa, a survivor of narcissistic abuse, and I have complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And you are listening to Hello Trauma Brain, a podcast where I share my experiences living with complex PTSD. My hope is this podcast can help destigmatize mental health and provide support for anyone diagnosed with CPTSD who thinks they might have it, or has a loved one with this diagnosis. Quick reminder, I am not a licensed psychologist or mental health care professional, and this podcast is not meant to replace nor substitute the care of psychologists, other mental health or medical health care professionals. If you think you might have complex PTSD or PTSD, please reach out to your primary care or mental health provider. This episode may reference trauma or abuse, and listener discretion is advised. Remember, you can always pause or skip this episode at any time. And now, let's get back to the episode. (laughs) 
Hello, dear survivors, and welcome. Welcome to this unscripted episode of Hello, Trauma Brain. I I know that was not the usual intro, and uh, I was going to hear it back, and then I was like, you know what, let me just keep going because <laughs> I might regret this if I hear it right away. <laughs> might as well just, just finish the thought. Uh, today, I am... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not only off script, I'm off, I feel off balance too. I, mm, I'm finding it hard to put this into words. And I want to be mindful. I don't want to go over the details of what happened. So instead, I will talk about how I'm feeling about it. I basically have come to the end of my time in a certain, um, in a certain organization and it really hurts. It hurts because I spoke up against something I didn't agree with. And as a trauma survivor, as a trauma survivor who has complex PTSD, speaking up is about the most dangerous thing you can do. My nervous system registers it like, it's really hard to describe it, but speaking up is really, really hard for me. And as I am healing, I'm trying to be more authentic and being more authentic means speaking your mind and voicing your opinion and not just doing the regular thing I tend to do, which is just fawn, freeze, shut the hell up and go to the corner and don't say a word because otherwise you will be casted out because that's what I am always afraid of, that when I speak up, I will get shunned and cast it out into the cold, dark night, never to be heard of again. But as I try to tell my nervous system that not everybody is unsafe and it's okay to speak up and we can handle whatever happens and if we get casted out, we, we, we will get a coat on, we will find new shelter, we will get food and we will figure it out. Part of me <laughs> was still hoping I was not cast out. I didn't think it would get to this. Before I could even register the fact that I went against what my nervous system was telling me not to do and I still spoke up and I still said the thing because that was the right thing to do, I was already getting cast out. <laughs> well, let's just say I have a fear of being in a car accident. And every time you get in the car, like your worst fear is you're going to get into this nasty accident. And you're trying to train your body to like get in the car. And, you know, we might not get into an accident today. It might be okay. And then, of course, that's the day that the whole shebang happens and the worst accident possible occurs. And even worse than what you could have imagined. That's kind of like the, the equivalent of what, what happened to me this weekend psychologically. I thought I would speak up and I thought I would work it out with healthy conflict um, skills and, and repair work and all the stuff my therapist talks about and everybody you know that I research this is what they say is the healthy way to go and and then and then there is no repair there is no healthy conflict resolution really fucking sucks that's where I'm at yeah it's I I'm, I'm I still can't believe that was the last time I still cannot believe that just like that it was over it was over so fast I was so fast I'm still I'm still like grasping how fast it happened how quickly and this is the thing with me there's a point, like there's a line that get that once once that line gets crossed, I'm out and I'm out so quick. I'm all, I'm just as quick to get the heck out, and I leave, and I leave, you know, I I leave quietly. I tend to leave just I don't I don't get into a whole debacle, back and forth. It's just like I'm out. Okay, that's what you want. Okay, sure. I will. You don't want to hear from me again. I will leave and I will never. I will never come back. 
okay. I'm not a survivor that has complex PTSD and uh, I know her name is, I think it's Elizabeth and I will try to find the episode. There's um, basically Elizabeth's partner has a podcast called Being Well and she was talking about having complex PTSD and she said something along the lines of, you know, I'm like a ghost. I just, she just fades away and nobody hears from her ever again when she's done. Uh, with with friends or or whatnot, I remember that hitting so deeply, and that's kind of how I am. I, I'm 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 kind of like a ghost, you know. If you if you cross that line with me, I will disappear. I won't engage anymore. I won't beg to be taken back. I just I just leave. I just it's okay. I'll take my bow, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll wish the person well, and that's as good as it gets. And I leave. That's it. I know when I'm not wanted somewhere, so I, I I do know how to do that very well. And I leave. So I left. I left. And then I had to do a gig. <laughs> Imagine being heartbroken and filled with grief and have to stand on a stage smiling the entire time for a while. Because that's what I had to do this weekend. And though I've, I've, just as much as it's hurt me to feel the grief, I also have to say that when you are healing and you're going through these times and you are starting to pull towards you healthier people they come around and they rally up <laughs> and they they do support and they do lift me up and they they carry me I'm not used to that I usually uh, so what I I found in the past has not been like this I I'm equally as shocked to feel loved in the middle of my grief. Oh yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see. Where do I want to go from here? What am I doing to heal? Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, I'm putting one foot in front of the other. I, even though on Saturday I was not hungry at all, I thought, Raisa, you are about to do a a show and you're gonna get home late and we need to eat something so we're eating something and even though we're not really hungry we're gonna eat anyway it looked like it looked like going on that stage and even though I was feeling so heartbroken and even though it was really hard to put the smile on I have to say once the music starts there's a there's something about music, and music has been such a therapeutic outlet for me, so I have to say the two and a half hours I spent up there, whatever the heck the time was, I don't know why I can't remember exactly how long this gig was, what the heck, what the heck, <laughs> oh my gosh, was it nine to, it's like nine to midnight, it's three hours, three hours, no, wait, 10, 11, 12, I think we finished before midnight. I don't. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go because I, my brain. Oh my gosh, it's just so dysregulated, and math is already not my forte, and it's just it's even worse right now. So, <laughs> as I was saying, 
us <laughs> and the music starts music is therapy too so it did distract me i did it wasn't all pretend all the time like it was hard to get myself to get there but there there were songs like there would be a time when like maybe three or four songs would go by and i was having such a great time and and one one thing that i do have that's a, a, a positive aspect of of my coping skills is i'm very attuned so when i'm on stage I am looking at the other musicians on stage and I'm paying attention to the crowd and I'm paying attention to what I am doing and I am attuned, like, is what I am doing being received? Do I need to shift what I'm doing? And I, I know that's its own manifestation of my fawning response. But it also kind of pulls me into the moment. And I will say, I, I, I would have been crying probably the entire time I was on that gig had I just been home. And instead, I didn't cry all that time. I was able to, for for a bit, forget forget how how much I was hurting. And then and then the the set break would come, and I would get off the stage, and it would just hit me like a ton of breaks. It was almost like somebody was waiting for me on the side of the stage with like a bucket filled with ice cold water, and they were just dumping it on me. It's like, oh, in case you forgot. Here's your grief, Risa. <laughs> Made to order. And I still kept putting one foot in front of the other. And I showed up and I made my commitment to sing and I did it. I was there. And um, I know I know some of the people there, the, some of the musicians noticed something was going on. I, I did let them know something was up without the details and... And they said something that I have heard before, which is, I, yeah, you wouldn't know from seeing you up there. Like, I, I, they have the knowledge, but if you just see me on stage, you wouldn't have a clue. I am, I am very good at hiding that stuff. I am, I am very good at hiding, hiding my pain when I need to. And, yeah, I did it again this weekend. And I know that won't be the last time. This is life. Life happens. Grief happens. Life doesn't care. <laughs> you have a script. Or that you want to have a scripted episode. It just happens. I guess the tools that I found the most helpful so far. And I haven't used them all yet. But part of it has been not fully isolating. I have been isolating a little bit. I know I have been. And I have, I have, I have set some some space because I it's just I, I I'm still not fully at a place where I've grasped everything that happened I'm still I'm still in that mode where I'm like kind of spinning out of control and I I have no idea where I'm gonna land yet and I and at the same time I haven't fully shut off people I'm I'm, I'm still connecting I'm still connecting I'm connecting and with pockets of space because I can only tolerate so much but there is a difference when you're completely isolating. I remember those days. Like I remember isolating for hours and hours and hours and just just and this is this feels this feels different. It feels different because I'm not fully isolating and I'm still living my life and I have <laughs> I have good support. I have really good support. And and I think what differentiates Going through grief now after I started healing from going through grief back when I wasn't healing is that I feel so seen and I feel so heard and I feel, I feel cherished. Even when there are people who are not treating me that way, the ones that do are enough for me to feel it. And... For the record, I have no regrets about speaking up. There was a moment where I was like, did I do the right thing? And I can I can say now, yes, yes, I did. I, I would do it again. I would absolutely do it again. Because I am proud of the Risa that can speak up and survive the consequences of speaking up. She's strong. Doesn't feel like it right now, but I, it's there. 
and I don't know what happens next. I know that every time I, I, I get a hole in my life, an empty seat becomes available. It tends to be taken. So I look forward to meeting whoever's going to sit there next, whoever's going to fill the hole, whoever's going to come into my life or whatever is going to come into my life and fill the opening, the the new space that's available. It's like almost like like announcing a job opening. It's like a position available. Would you like to be on Risa's life? Would you like to become a part of her next journey and adventure and project? And something or someone is bound to say yes to that invitation. It'll be nice. It'll be nice to see what comes what comes next. For now, I, I think this podcast is, is, <laughs> is a great next. It's, a, it's an ongoing next. Uh, and I, I appreciate you listening. I, I really do. I because I'm unscripted I didn't have a healing invitation um, scripted ahead of time but let's come up with something now let's see um my gosh I don't <laughs> healing invitation for this week oh my goodness what are we gonna do for this week hmm <sighs> Oh my gosh, I don't know. Is there something that's been happening that you don't agree with? Something, even something that you've changed your mind about? I feel like sometimes we get so caught up, like, you know, we if, if we didn't have an opinion from the get-go, or, or if we had an opinion from the get-go, it, it needs to stay that way. Maybe it's something you're changing your mind about, and then that's okay too. It's something, whatever it is, you know, where you stand today is... It doesn't feel right. And there is no need to pull a Risa and, 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 and speak up and, and, and take a larger risk. For a moment, just reflect on why that doesn't feel right to you. Why does it matter? Is this something that really feels important to you? And just reflect on it. You don't have to make a decision. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to make a huge announcement or write a, a long-ass email. Think about it. And if you have a safe person, perhaps talk to them about this thing that you have recognized as perhaps something that doesn't align with your values. And talk it through if you can with a safe person. And see where that goes. See how having that conversation feels like. This is not an invitation to <laughs> to do anything else. However, if you do choose to, if you do choose to have a conversation about whatever comes up for you, I I want you to know that I I support you. I am already proud of you. And I, I think your voice is worth being heard, just like mine is. Please let me know how this week's healing invitation goes if you choose to accept it. Before we wrap up this episode, all music and production is courtesy of yours truly, also, I want to share a few ways you can support this podcast. You can subscribe and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or the platform you are using to listen. Share this episode with anyone you think can benefit from this content. Follow Hello Trauma Brain on Instagram. Subscribe to the Hello Trauma Brain YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when I post a new episode. And you can make a donation by getting me a coffee through the official bio site. No worries, all links will be provided in the show notes. (music) 
And I completely forgot to say this earlier. I'm pretty sure I did because this is what happens when you're unscripted. Any individuals or resources I have mentioned in this episode are not sponsoring Hello Trauma Brain. Thank you so much for listening. I I appreciate you all tremendously. I I'm so honored you listen and <laughs> I know this week is a little bit more out there than than the scripted episodes. Hopefully you can find something helpful here and thank you again. Thank you for thank you for your presence. I hope that you are able to find a connection to the things that you value and I hope that you also find safe spaces where you can voice what matters to you without the risk of being completely casted out and if that was to happen to you or if that has happened to you first things first I am so sorry that you ever went through that And I really hope it doesn't happen. But if it does, I want you to know it takes a lot of courage to speak up. And you've done nothing wrong. And I support you. And it is okay. If if you're listening to this podcast, I can only imagine what you've survived so far. And I know you can survive so much more. It is time for our farewell affirmations. You are welcome to repeat after me. I am enough. I am lovable. And I deserve to heal. I wish you a gentle week and thank you for listening.